What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Artful Chiropractor Podcast. My name is Dr. Ray Daniels. This episode, I'm joined by Dr. Brett Jones, and we chat about quite a few different things. But the big one in the beginning is we talk about how to set boundaries around people's requests, messages, calls, all of the different avenues, because it is so easy for people to reach out and connect with us that there are certain expectations that people may have around our response. So I enjoyed hearing his insight on that and how we can set up a structure and have some strategies around allowing ourselves to continue to get our own needs met and not sacrificing those because we feel that we need to get back to everybody and every single message in a certain amount of time. And then towards the end or halfway through, we take a pretty deep dive into what it means to show up and listen with all of ourselves. And with that, I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you all are having an amazing holiday season, getting ready for Christmas and New Year's and doing some goal setting, some planning, some intention setting so that 2019 can be an awesome year. So with that, sit back and enjoy the episode. Dr. Brett Jones, welcome to the podcast, dude. Here we are again, my friend. Yes, we we are. are It's good to have you back on and not uh, six months in between or even longer. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we went a month this time. Yeah, right? That's good. that's good. Yeah. All right, man. So, you know, I recently, you know, saw your post and uh, it might have been a few weeks ago, but it was just you really sharing, you know, some breakthroughs that you've had around not needing to respond to everybody and kind of letting them, letting everybody know that, I think. I can only imagine the amount of people that are trying to reach out to you and, and maybe some yeah. people get frustrated, you know, if you don't respond. But I mean, if you really think about it, it's just like it's challenging responding to the people that are super close to you and having those connections. So it's like there's got to be a challenging, you know, balance with all of that. So I'd love to just hear your thoughts on that because it'll be really beneficial for all of us to hear because as we continue to develop and grow and get farther on and along our path, we're going to have this similar struggles and we need to be able to create boundaries and just let people know that it's like it's not personal <laughs> it's like right. it's we gotta right. do what's absolutely. best for us absolutely so you know technology is beautiful and <laughs> there's another side to it um so just think about this you know it wasn't i think much much more than 30 years ago <clears throat> that if you weren't actually calling somebody you were needing to send them a letter in the mail, right? There was no email, there was no text messages, there was no DMs and all of these things. And like I said, there's beauty in it and the fact that we can so easily communicate with the ones that we want to communicate with and there's another side to it. Meaning that people think that because, you know, that they can send a text message or a message or a DM that the person on the other side of that is a, is obligated to respond to them and like quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, yeah, so I feel like in the last, in the last five years or so, you know, especially as things have built with Kairos that, you know, I've wanted to like really like be able to be there for people, right? And as this has gone on, it's expanded past Kairos. And, you know, we have the YouTube channel that has 35,000 subscribers and has a lot of comments on, you know, some of those videos. And in the beginning, I was responding to a lot of those comments, right? And um, a lot of emails come in from those videos. And, um, you know, in, on Instagram, a lot of messages come through. A lot of messages come through on Facebook. Um, and then again, I have my family and I have my practice and I have, you know, uh, Equinox, the business. So then there's a there's a lot of responsibilities, and um, what I used to experience was a level of guilt and or like shame for not being able to prioritize responding to somebody, especially right away. And man, you'd be surprised. Like I had people send me messages that I didn't even, I've never even known or met. And like follow up, like, hey, you didn't respond to my message. <clears throat> I'm like, who are you? <laughs> I don't even know you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But that's the crazy thing is like, you know, some people want to walk around with that expectation. Um, but 
that all comes down, it always comes back to us, right? That we have to have boundaries. And if the boundaries are loose, then people feel like they can do whatever. You know what I mean? And what the truth is, people will take as much advantage as they can of you, right? And don't get me wrong, because it, it can happen from a place of abundance and um, from a place of love. And like I said, like I've, I've never felt bad on the giving. I just need to set boundaries for self. And so like kind of the breakthrough was I don't have any obligation to respond to anybody within any certain amount of time. Like just <laughs> straight up. Like right. whatever, whatever, like, and here's a crazy, you know, Facebook even does like on your business pages now, they want you to keep a certain rating of getting back to people. Like, so they'll rate like how fast you get back to people and then give you an actual like grade. Like you have, it has a 90% response rate and within 24 hours or whatever. So it's like, and then people like, so that, that's just, that, but again, they're, they're wanting to create a certain behavior that mm -hmm. would make you addicted to the technology. Right. Right. So that you spend more time on Messenger or you spend more time on Facebook. And it's just like, bro, at the end of the day, like I got my family. That is a number one priority. I got my businesses that are, you know, like a second priority. And then I got, you know, the friendships that are in. Um, but outside outside of that, bro, like it's like I can't I can't I can't guarantee any type of response at all. And it doesn't mean that like you don't matter. It was like how I finished it, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't respond, it doesn't mean that you don't matter. It means that I do. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't um, disqualify that that um, by me mattering mean, means that you don't. <laughs> but I'm just saying like I gotta take care of self, and I got I got stuff that I need to work on. I got conversations that I need to have as priorities. And I just sometimes do not have um, the priority to respond to every message um, and or within 24 hours. The majority still I'll get back to in like 48 to 72 at this moment. Yeah. But uh, it's not always like, oh, shit, I got a, I got a notification. I got to get back to this person. Nah, man, I let go, I'm, I'm letting go of that more and more and more of feeling that pressure to respond. Did you have – a single moment or a series of moments that you're like, all right, I'm done. Like what kind of sparked that within you? Well, I think, I think for a while now it has been this cycle of, I, <clears throat> I would have a, a lot of energy and space. And so I would be good at responding to messages. And then I would go into introspection and in introspection, um, I would not want to be responding to people and then I was feeling the guilt of not responding to people right. and or the shaming from those people for not responding to them, right? Yeah. Um, and so and that's just been, that's been, go ahead. I was going to say like, that introspection, would that just be like time by yourself and like meditation and your practices that allowed you to reflect on what you were experiencing that ultimately right. kind of led to that? Yeah. So let's go higher level consciousness on this. Right. If if we are constantly on the majority of our time helping meet others needs and responding to the level of consciousness of questions that they are asking, that can be what is holding you to your current level of consciousness. Hmm. So it's important to either one associate with beings that are doing higher level consciousness work and you're the one learning, right? And asking the questions and or going deep um, to the reconnection of spirit with time for introspection, meditation, visualization, breath work and, and all of the other rituals that we've built you know, throughout this time to continual, uh, continually reconnect to the source of all um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's important to, to, to see, you know, what, what level of, and it's not, it's not to disqualify, you know, what, what, what type of questions are coming in, but like I have, you know, I got people making like book, book, like book requests and, and other, like, it's, it's just like, which again, I'd love to help. And like, that's not real high on my priority list. Like, right. That's going to take away from 
the higher right. priority and your ultimate purpose. Right. And so I, I try to find the balance of, 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 of like appreciating people, at least in general, and wanting to love on them and wanting to give to them. But also, like, um, I highly value growth, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I do highly value contribution as well. And so that's, like, where I'm kind of – you know, <laughs> I'm going back and forth, you know, there. Um, but I highly value growth and, and, and spiritual connectivity and continuing to discover. And that's kind of, you know, my role in this as – as ha- strong hawk medicine, you know, and strong, really now, sh- you know, shamanistic medicine, knowledge and power of, of being able to travel to those unknown spaces, um, and to, to grab the visions and be a divine messenger. And in order to do that, that takes a lot of work, man. Right. Um, and takes a lot of time with self and a time in nature and time in, in these places. And, you know, on these, devices t- can pull away from that like, yeah, i'm getting really. an image right now like just imagine imagine yourself right um being a carrier of light <clears throat> and where are the sources that you that you then take on more light right like you know like on the mountaintop and in, in pristine natural scenes you know deep introspection self-work taking deep dives and then what are the sources that then pull away right and then how do we stay this continuous conduit to allow it to pour in as much as it's pouring out um because that shit's real right you know i, I mean I, I, as much as i love to connect to the infinite source of all and i'm abundant like I do need to replenish and um, from a, a physical energetic level, but also from a mental, emotional and spiritual level. And uh, yeah. No. yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you sharing that because all of us can learn from that. And it's so easy for our days to get filled with everything. And then at the end of the day, you're like, I had no, no space. Like there was no <laughs> space for creativity or reflection or, just looking back and like, all right, am I on the right path? Am I, you know, mm. making the decisions that I want to make and the habits? And it's so easy to go weeks, months, you know, so right. long without like, well, there's no space in my life. Like, yeah. there's no time for reflection. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's huge. Um, and I, I really appreciated that, you know, you sharing that because it's, you can apply it in both ways of like people who re- are reaching out to me or messaging me and feeling that same way. But then right. also like when I reach out to somebody, so it's like, oh, I right. can stop being attached to whether or not yes. they respond to me, you know? Yes. It's like, yes. So that, that's a huge takeaway as well. Yeah. So it's interesting. Well, a couple things here. One is uh, I want to send a quick shout out to uh, Kate Jones, my wife. Uh, she's creating um, what she's calling the selfish space. Right. And self isn't the big self, but ultimately it's the same thing. You know, like when we, when we run these cycles without introspection, then we become machines. Right. And then often we are machines to a system in favor of others. And, um, and we lose sight of why our purpose and why we're here and, um, and we're missing out on the listening. Right, which is to me of the utmost importance. The second piece is um, I had a really uh, interesting interaction with Caitlin at level three, which I believe we're going to start talking about here in a minute. Um, she had sent me a message when she was going through, you know, a difficult time in her life, and of course I'd love to respond to it, and for whatever reason I didn't get back to it. And um, she she made sure to grab me and get a hold of me, and she's like, you know, I want to share something with you. I saw what you posted, and ultimately what I've realized is that the space that you gave me is what I needed. However, what I had built up was a story in my in my head that was actually causing me to dislike you and 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 hate you mm-hmm. for not being there um, when I sent you that. However, what I've realized is that story that I had generated this entire time um, was not real. And she's all, I love you, and I appreciate you, and um, when you are here, you are here for me, and I just wanted to thank you. And that was like, you know, talk about going going full circle, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, and of course, don't get me wrong. Like we, I want to be there for the friends that 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 need me in the ways that they need me. Um. 
and sometimes, you know, you know, just just like anything, sometimes, you know, it gets away from us a little bit. Um, but that good was a lesson, big, though, man, because because, yeah, you know, if it worked out where you had the space and, it, you know, you were being called and you responded, that's, you know, one thing. But then by not responding, that's almost like, all right, the universe is a way of like, hmm, maybe it's time for me to sit with this one on my own. Right. And figure this out by myself, you know, you know, Great rather than reaching right. out. <laughs> Great insight, right. So good stuff, brother. So let's, yeah, that's a good transition. You know, you, you guys just crushed out an awesome level three in Atlanta. Um, just heard some great things and I just, yeah, want some, want some takeaways and I'll have some follow up questions because I know more and more docs are showing up to that. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to see the evolution, but let's jump into that. Yeah, no, for, for me, level three, it was an amazing opportunity to return to facilitating, um, for Kairos because, that had been the longest gap I'd gone without facilitating a camp. So I believe my last one was in April, a level two in April. And so it was uh, nearly six months there <clears throat> or, or six months. Yeah. Um, since I had facilitated camp and it was, it was cool to see quite a few things. So from a facilitation perspective, I was uh, really happy with my ability to give just enough information and Lance, Lance brought it up uh, like as a 20% rule, right? In parenting, if you give your kids like 20% of the instructions and then allow them to explore the other 80, right? And I feel like that's what we all did really well there was that we would cue just enough that then they could really explore for themselves. Because ultimately, we want these self-discoveries, right? That um, it's not left brain education that I need to, to outside in give you something. But I'm really trying to um, inspire um, education that is drawn out, right? Inside out, which is our chiropractic principle, right? Oh, yeah. So that was big uh, from a facilitation perspective. On another aspect was... I think it was the best boundaries for self that I've had. I feel like my energy was was great coming back home. Um, and with that, also the ability to um, close the circle for the group. So I think in the past, you know, I've always had this unique ability to really to really push people, you know, to altered states, you know, to um, crazy experiences. And yet, uh, the integration piece maybe has not been as strong, right? And so um, what I was able to notice that is that in this camp, upon finishing that, I felt really, really, really good about people re-entering whatever they're going back to. Um, and so that felt really good, just from a facilitation perspective. But let's talk about like the camp itself as far as like what was experienced. You had something coming in? Yeah, I was just curious. Like, So what does that look like on your end? helping them on an integration level, like towards the end of the camp. Is that, is it less input from you or what allows them to go home and integrate a little bit better? Um, more space of integration. Like, so times like instead of always needing to go from one experience to another experience to another, to, to sit with it, reflect where are we at right now? Does anybody have any questions? Um, the container that we set, um, always, always, uh, coming back to what were some of the original ideas or lessons and integrating them and interweaving them throughout the weekend. And then understanding that as we were moving through different experiences that we were just getting, uh, more depth on what was originally brought up. Right. So I thought that was really helpful. Awesome. Um, yeah. And I think, I think, you know, when you, so I've sat through uh, a, a quite a few ceremonies now, you know, you know, so outside of other seminars, but now getting into, you know, some more shamanistic ritual and and other thing like closing circle. It's interesting, you know, because we always close circle, you know, when we wrap up and we have each other in our hands. Uh, but really starting to understand um, what closing circle means. Like, so how how are you tying up and wrapping up? the entire weekend. Um, and you know, interesting enough, I just got this book by Sandra Ingerman called the book of ceremony and I'm loving it. It's a you know, sh shamanic wisdom for invoking the sacred in everyday life. And in there is, uh, some excellent, 
uh, keys to facilitation and um, just reminding me of the things that we're doing really well and always how there's there's room to get better. Mm-hmm. And um, But yeah, I think those were the, the key strategies there. Awesome. Yeah, because that's always been a big thing for me of just, yeah, not having the space, especially through school, of the integration and to be able to really apply everything right away. So that's awesome to hear that, the breakthrough with that camp. Um, but yeah, so I know you've had a couple of personal experiences too that have happened or at least one big one that kind of coincided with level three yeah. i don't know if you're ready to transition to that one or not or if you had some more some takeaways from the camp i would say let's, let's 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 go just a little bit more into the camp from the actual experiential perspective and kind of what what happened i think that will lead into um what we're getting to next so uh level three in general was, was amazing to have we had dr katina manning there um dr topher rowanhurst um dr abby elbaum uh, new, newly Dr. Marwin, uh, who is a facilitator at uh, Life University, basically since it started, and so it was it was amazing to have you know more docs there, and especially you know having Katina there, who's been in there, been in practice for thirty years, and is is very well respected in you know the technique seminar world um, for all the work that she's done with BGI and you know teaching her own seminars, and and she yeah, I believe she's I think she's like sixty two. And bro, wow, she did wow. everything. <laughs> and so for those of you that know, you know, what we do in our camps, like we, we there was a moment that we were outside and it was not very warm and, um, we're in bathing suits about to jump in the lake and we're doing sprints, bro, like barefoot in the forest, <laughs> you know, like doing sprints and doing different activities and then going to jump in the lake, you know, and, um, and then we were, you know, all kinds of different breath work and whatever. She, but she was all in all weekend, and it was a beautiful thing to see, man. And um, I believe she had a great experience. But wow. uh, so that is amazing. Docs, <laughs> yeah, it's great, brother. And then you know, just having the docs there was amazing. Um, and as we move into 2019, offering CEU, I believe we're going to see a lot more docs come into the camps, which is great. Uh, I believe we reach a certain level of maturity that we are ready for that. Um, and the, the theme of the weekend seemed to be surrounding the word allow and surrender. So even when attending camps, people tend to come in with a certain level of expectation, right? That I'm here, I have a certain expectation to attain some type of educational learning outcome or – uh, some type of experience or whatever it is. And as I'm studying more and more quantum, uh, I was reading the book Beyond Quantum by Ma- Michael Talbert on the way out there and in actual personal experience, which I'll get into here in a minute, I'm realizing the, the more pressure, and that's what it is, expectation, just to visualize this, when you, when you hear the word expectation, I want you to visualize and feel pressure. So think about you being an unlimited, expansive human being, right, with with these energetic inlets and outlets. And then think about expectation, which lives in the mental realm, which is one of, you know, the energetic fields off the body, starting with the etheric and then moving into, I believe it's the, the it's a emotional, mental, astral. And so – off the body, you're like about four to six inches or so, or I think it's two to four inches when you're in the mental. That that mental expectation is a pressure that restricts the abundance. Hmm. <laughs> but why why is it right? Why is it that the lasting purpose, Doctor Sadie Williams, said to give to love to serve. Without expectation, I think he was on to something. Now I'm getting more actual kinesthetic of what it is. So when we have expectation, you're putting a pressure on your energetic, expansive, abundant being that limits the possibility. So basically, you're now operating only from egoic, educated limited mind and egoic educated limited mind knows only what it knows right so if i come from 
uh, educational background that has taught me a certain way of thinking, and I expect that, that is often what I will get and very rarely anything more. Hmm. And this is expectations from experiences, from people, from anything. And from people on our table, and that's what we really got into. How can we connect with people in a way that we honor them for who they are, love and appreciate them for all that they are, and in the connection, it's just a continual discovery in sacred dance, if you will, meaning that even us viewing the system from a place of dysfunction, dis-ease, subluxation, and all of these things, that's what shows up. So, yes, it can be useful to train that, right? There's right. going to be times. That's why there is a level one and a level two. And that's why you go to school. Oh, don't be wrong. Like that foundational understanding will get you so far. And then there will be time to train the mental and emotional energetic fields. And then there will be time to discover more. Eventually, the goal is to get to a place where you just are. You just are. They just are, I'm here to connect with you. I'm seeing where your system is guiding me. And as it's opening up, I let go of all expectations that anything is possible in that connection. And that's where I believe we start to see miracles. That's where we tap into the quantum abundance um, by removing the observer. Hmm from the expectation, right? That opens up the infinite field. And so um, that does require training. And that's why I believe training is so freaking important because if you go with no expectation, but with no skill, <laughs> it's a different story, <laughs> right? Right. So we want to have a lot of skill development to then go to that place. And that's what I was saying. Like That's why training outside of your practice is so important because if I'm always training the skill development in practice, then that doesn't allow me to enter the space of being there in the, the unlimited potential. Hmm. Mm. A couple things coming up for me there. Yep. I love it. So, I mean, that's a space that you can enter, you know, in the room when you're adjusting, you know, you're serving people. You know, if, if you've trained it, if you put the time in and to get beyond right. that expectation level. And then so bringing it back to a very heady place. So when you're, say, they're doing your, your day one or your day two with people and they're very much on that level of like, all right, what do I expect? Or what mm -hmm. they're going to expect. And then so you're you're coming down to that level and meeting them there. Yeah. So how does this play into communication with people you know, getting up into care and care plans and, and all of that when. Sure. Yeah, yeah, man. You're taking people through the ladder, you know, um, eventually I mean, you're, we're always attracting the people that are going to be able to receive the benefit for where we're at. Hmm. I believe last week we told the story of there will be times where people come in hmm, and you may not be ready for them. Right. And that will be a reminder um, of insight every now and then. To keep training and to keep to keep training. Yeah, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> the universe keep keeping you humble. That there's more. <laughs> yeah, that that that, that uh, humble serving, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of, of humility pie. So, uh, yeah. So based on based on where we're at. So for instance, uh, I've I've talked about this before. I believe uh, going up the ladder of of consciousness within practice. Uh, I believe it, at, at a certain, let's say at a certain point, at a certain spectrum, because I'm not going to say lower, at a certain spectrum is treatment, right? So on, on one side of the spectrum is you have a certain symptom. I'm going to provide care as the fixer or as the healer to attempt to fix your symptom, right? Uh, going going in another direction of that spectrum, then you would say um, 
there's a dysfunction that is creating the symptom that you're experiencing. And so I'm interested into what dysfunctional patterns are creating what you're experiencing. And originally I'm looking at the dysfunctional pattern that is closest to symptom and eventually working my way to understanding how all is interconnected and that a dysfunctional pattern anywhere could be causing what you're feeling somewhere. Then I move along the spectrum and now I'm understanding that really it's your inability to adapt to the stressors in your life that are creating the dysfunctions that's creating the symptom. So now when I'm talking to you, we're talking about adaptability and adaptation and how um, through adjusting and how through self-care that one can navigate uh, the space of becoming a more adaptable human being. Then I believe you can still go uh, across the spectrum to perception that um, really everything that I'm experiencing in my environment and my ability in, or, and or inability to adapt is coming also from my ability or inability to properly perceive my external or internal environment, which will then bridge the gap to understanding that really it's about consciousness. Mm. And so it's, I believe, like I going up the, the skill ladder. Like right? all so suffering this, comes from misperception. Misperception, exactly. So, but I'm just glad I, I've never laid it out like that. Actually, I do like that layout. Oh, <laughs> oh, sweet. Oh, oh, pretty good. I'm going to have to re-listen to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take some notes uh, on that one. <laughs> so um, one is understanding, you know, where you may be in that spectrum as doctor and what you're find, finding the highest value in serving people because – Understand, like I said, it's not lower and or higher, uh, and I don't want to communicate it as because because when when you communicate, when you communicate as lower and higher, then people think one is worse. Yep, and that's why I don't want to communicate it as that right now because neither of them is better or worse because some or every one of them are meeting certain people's needs, both as doctor and as patient. Meaning that, um, and actually, uh, Epstein will talk about this in the Twelve Stages of Healing. Another great book, right? He, he talks about how based on what stage of healing somebody is at, they will seek certain practitioner to help them with where they're at hmm. and vice versa, right? So that if, if, if there's 12 stages, you know, according to Epstein, that everybody then has some need that certain a certain person on, on that spectrum will help, Right. And you may be getting a lot of value in meeting your needs and living your purpose being at a certain spectrum on of that of what just got laid out. So I may really want to help people with their pain and symptoms and I want to do that in the most efficient and effective way and I want to do it from a very um, educated mind. And that helps meet my needs and it helps meet their needs because they, they're coming in from medical model and they're used to that and da 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 and then somebody might be really functional based, right? The source, um, more than anything, I would say is functional. Like that's the majority of it is functional going into adaptability. And then the conversations that are happening on the table are more perception and consciousness. But we meet people, uh, majority of people we meet at the functional level, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where our practice is at. We meet them at the functional level, meaning that they're coming in with symptoms. They're usually telling us about their symptoms, but they were talking about how it's dys dysfunctions at creating their symptoms. And then as they start care and progressing care, the tables, the conversations that are happening on the table, we'll talk about adaptability, we'll talk about perception, and we'll talk about consciousness. So, um, that however, has a lot to do with, I mean, just where you are at, where you know, Dr. Right. Jordan, Dr. Darren, right. and you, now right. you have a couple others. Who's also Lauren's in there? Lauren and Kate. Yep. Lauren and Kate. Yes. And so, and I just want to drop this into the field. <clears throat> Is it possible to have a practice that has a consciousness entry? Hmm. <clears throat> a consciousness entry in terms Meaning of the people that, that are coming in? Exactly. Remember I said we're attracting where we are and what our values are and what our purpose is 
what we spend the most of, what are we reading? What are we listening to? How are we operating? What's our thought patterns? You know, that's all creating our vibration of what is possible to attract. And so is it possible to have a consciousness-based practice that that is your um, intake? <laughs> and what's really cool is I've, I, I was at IONS yesterday. The Institute of Noetic Sciences, which was founded by Edgar Everett, which I believe then went on to become a doctor, Edgar Everett, who was an astronaut. And upon his return, I think from the moon, I'm not sure if it was the moon or if it was somewhere else out in space. But <laughs> upon <laughs> return, coming back to Earth, he has this moment of, of feeling interconnected to all. And it com like completely like physiological response of I am basically, you know, the biotensegrity, right, mm. of the universe, like feeling, feeling connected to the cosmos, feeling connected to the earth, feeling connected to all the people of the earth, all the sentient beings, all of this, like just this overwhelming experience. And from that, he's like, we have to study this. Mm. And so starting in 1972, starts creating – Basically, this league of scientists that have been studying consciousness. They study uh, psychic abilities. They study telep telep uh, telepathy. They study uh, remote healing. They study um, – they're doing all kinds of just crazy stuff. Um, like I said, and I believe in another episode, I'd love to get into um, the research that's being proposed now because I got some insight as I was there yesterday. And they're, they are getting into some very interesting things. But they have um, – they've created – this 20 to 30 minute questionnaire that also um, is measuring your brain waves, but that also studies intuition. So they'll flash an image on the screen and you'll have a list of like five, five different possibilities of what the next one will be. And so then you have to then estimate and guess like or use your intuition on what the next one was. But it basically it rates your, your level of intuition and consciousness. What? That's yeah. crazy. And what's crazy is I don't think they're really uh, utilizing. So I'm inspired, um, which again I, I believe can come into another episode. Cool. Um, but but to to close circle on on this topic, um, it's it's important, and that's why I think these camps are so important, man. Is that in the progression? It, if, if, if it was a natural progression on potentially on somebody's development without going to have experiences like this, who knows when they would get exposed to the beingness? Mm -hmm. Meaning mm -hmm. I would always think that somebody comes in, I want to deliver a certain result. I'm viewing them as this, this, and this. Asking them about how this, this, and this is going. <laughs> how are you feeling today? <laughs> right. And then that's my measurement. Right of of how how well I'm doing. What a beautiful space to be in, with with elevated human beings to come together, and I don't need to know or hear. Right, this is oh man, I need to get into this. I don't need to hear about what's going on with you. I'm gonna feel and listen to all of you. We get lost in one sense. Mm -hmm. And then confirm it with the second sense of kinesthetic feel, right? right? We're not even just five senses, bro. There's a lot more going on when people are starting to wake up. Yep. So what if I – so this has been my new line and when I'm starting people in practice. I love it. You know, I've, I've changed it. I used, to, I used to say something slightly different, but this has been it now. So I, I'm, you know, I orient them to the space. I tell them where the face fuzzies are. I tell them about the tables and everything. And I tell them like kind of what to expect, how long they're going to be there, right? Not what to expect, but how, how, long, the, uh, how long the appointment usually is. Yep. And then what I say is, if you ever have anything new going on with you, feel free to tell me about it. I may not always ask you about it, and that does not mean that I do not care. I'm always listening. <laughs> and how? What is their response to that? It's 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 it, well, you know, I, partly because of the people that I attract, they get it. Yeah. Right. But and some of them like their eyes open, like. What are you like? What? But it's intriguing, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always listening. 
right? Because yeah. listening is not just an audible effect. <laughs> right. <laughs> Our cause, right? That um, what if we showed up and we listened with all of us? Hmm. And so that's what was beautiful about removing – By removing the language component of it, of you needing to tell me or even me needing to read about the things that you got going on, I can now discover the parts of of you that really might need healed. Right. What's what's the cause of all the stuff that you're talking about? You don't know. No people don't usually know the cause, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm now if I'm now focused on the effect. And I'm using an educated process trying to work my way back instead of just being there and listening. <laughs> oh, man. man, this is powerful, So bro. that's what level three was, bro. It was like <laughs> show up, listen to all of this human being and connect to them with all of you and allow them to emerge hmm. by allowing yourself to be there. And uh, another, so actually, I don't, I don't think we're getting to the um, the follow up after this today. We'll save that for another time as well, because I think this is fucking good. We can stay on here. Yep. Another piece of this is the willingness, right? A lot of times we want we want people to be vulnerable on the table or move into somatic waves or, or whatever it is. Like, how willing are you? What I found is when we're rigid in our body, they're rigid in their body. So it's interesting, you know, we we have these technique systems in chiropractic that look mechanical. And you're wondering why we get mechanical results. And they say, because, you know, you know, when certain people watch my videos, right, they'll be like, I don't understand why you move the way that you do. Well, like one, like, dude, I am who I am, right? I live in Oakland. Like I have – I have a certain ethnic background, right? I, I have certain roots. <laughs> yep. You know, I have a certain ability and or inabilities in in my frame to do certain things. I don't I don't mirror. I'm I'm, I'm I show up as an artist means I show up as me. <laughs> right. And me not as the people me, that are coming in. Right. And so it's like again, like there's t- I'm not a technician. <laughs> yeah. And so it's not for me to be like. Oh, I need to frame myself to now deliver a force. Let us P to A and I to I don't know. I'm listening to the system and seeing where an impulse can be best received from whatever combination of vectors of the universe is allowing for. And so this again, going back to the willingness, how willing are you to hold space and potentially experience the deep rooted emotion? That this person is not experiencing. Hmm. As a vessel. <laughs> Which some people, again, uh, especially the the, the 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 highly sensitive people in the impasse, take on. It's not our job to take on. Willingness is not a taking on. Willingness is an allowing to pour through. So in in the listening of the person, all of them, and all of you, I'm allowing that reception as I was allowing that reception. I, the visualization I was giving for people is the Taurus, right? If you've ever seen the Taurus, especially in animation, that it's collecting and it's pouring through the midline and then it's filtering back out the bottom and it's this continuous circuit, right? And that's us, especially when connected to the sacred heart space. So we ground and source, ground into Mother Earth, source to Father Spirit, catch the Merkaba in the heart space. And then from there, we're that that infinite stream in Taurus. And then in the listening is a giving. And in the giving is a listening and receiving. And it's happening continuously. And then that's the dance where huh, now this is coming through. That's the sacred dance that's allowing the particle to become wave. Right. In the exchange of reciprocity. And so we have to be willing. And in that willingness, 
you'll start to tap into the, the field of all, the infinite potential, where we're breaking the hard particle form and entering this infinite uh, wave stream of potential. Whew. Just drop the mic right there, brother. I think, I think we're good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. A couple things, though. Yeah. So that's, I mean, again, just showing what's possible with, with care. And I like how you framed it as, like, not one is not right or wrong. But, but again, mean, yeah. yeah. But you can go, like, for the people that, you know, they go, go their entire careers of, of staying on a certain level and never seeing what's possible on other levels with care. I think that's that's why, I mean, the level three right. is so important, especially for docs right. who haven't experienced this at all. It's just like, okay, wow, like there is such an, an evolution, you know, if that's what you're drawn to and that's where, where you right. want to mm-hmm. take your... At Take least your... see what's possible. Right. It was funny. 2019 IONS conference here in the Bay Area is all about – it's called uh, defining what's possible. Mm. So this is where they bring in the wild new science and consciousness to show like, yo, this is what's possible. So it's, it's important, again, to, to go from – you know, to, to live in what, what, and who we are and who we be and our interact with our environment, but also allow ourselves time to connect to a greater unknown Mm. and expose ourselves to what's happening, um, to see what's possible. And we can decide whether or not that's for us. Yeah. Um, but as again, how often are we allowing ourselves those moments, you know? And so that these camps and seminars and experiences are very, very important because it allows the field to expand in what's possible and what's being done. Yeah. And just huge pattern interrupts for people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, okay, I've been in this pattern for such a long time, but having these experiences can shift everything and kind of take you on a whole new trajectory with your career and your life. Yep. Absolutely. And then real quick on the consciousness, uh, I forget what you called it, but a consciousness uh, when they come in, like, so for me, that's just like when people are coming into my office it's a it's a reflection like it, it kind of gives yeah. me some feedback of like where i'm at like i have this yeah. idea of like who i want to take care of and the level of consciousness of where they're at but the people who i'm attracting that's just that's a really good mm-hmm. feedback for where i'm at and just the, <laughs> the opportunity for growth to evolve myself yeah. and that i will then attract yes people i will add level. i will add i will add something else for you um that i believe will be helpful understand that when we're in an office, it's not just you, right? Because so, for instance, if if it's if it's my office, then now all the people that are coming in are more than likely of my direct consciousness. However, when we are an associate in an IC, there's a certain energetic grid set up of that office that is also attracting a certain clientele. So it's not just all you, right? right. That um, that there is a, a mass consciousness surrounding the practice that you're in. So anybody that's an associate or anybody that's an IC. Or anybody that's in a multi-doc office, understanding that you're working with a collective consciousness of uh, that's creating an energetic grid that's a, a, or an energetic vibrational signature that's attracting or repelling people from your office. Hmm. Nice work, brother. I've enjoyed this one, man. This is going to be a one I'm going to go back and listen to, take some more <laughs> notes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> At last, the last 30 minutes, man, that we went in. We went in, brother. That yep. was good. Awesome, man. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to our next chat. We'll probably dive in a little bit more into the ions and then a personal experience that you just recently had. We'll probably maybe we'll combine those two. Love you, brother. Love you, man. Peace. Next time. Peace. All right, TAC listeners, if you enjoy this one, head over to iTunes or Stitcher so you can subscribe to the podcast and get an automatic download of our newest episode each and every week. While you're at it, we love a review, a comment, a rating, anything that will allow us to reach more docs and more students and continue to raise the bar in chiropractic performance training. If you haven't yet checked out the artfulchiropractor.com, you can do that for show notes for this episode and previous ones, along with any of the resources that our docs are dropping. And if you haven't yet checked out the Kairos Training Culture Community Facebook page, you have to get there, send a request with a message of who you are and why you want to be a part of the group because there are so many amazing golden nuggets that are being dropped every single day that are elevating the chiropractic performance game. So with that, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week as always. And until next time, peace.